All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Maddie here from Chill TCG. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 16 deck lists from the Chill Series number 21 PTCGO tournament, which wrapped up this Wednesday. Uh, it was an awesome tournament, guys. We had, uh, I think, 240 players in this tournament. We had 200 Shining Fates packs in the prize pool. It was an absolutely fantastic turnout. I want to give a big thanks to everybody who played and everybody who came and, and, and had an opportunity to sort of win these Shining Fates packs and participate in, in this community event, which I always run every Wednesday. I just really appreciate it. Um, it was our first tournament of Season 3, uh, which was a kind of a big deal um, because, uh, of course, it's a new season, new rankings, and, and we had a really great prize pool, so... Um, you know, yeah, big shout out to all you guys. Um, out of 240 people, we had a fantastic top 16 here. Um, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. And uh, yeah, I mean, as the first thing you'll probably notice is there's a lot of Eternatus VMAX. That is sort of, uh, I guess, what most people would consider the best deck in the format right now, uh, which is fine. We're not going to take too much time to go over each of those Eternatus lists, but we'll give them their shine. Uh, we'll look through them and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, you know, give them some 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 analysis as we go through sorry about that i'm really thirsty okay uh, and the number 16 spot we have actually have our boy 76ers from the u.s he went nine and four uh, he was playing rillaboom raweg uh, of course raweg rillaboom i mean this is uh, this is his bread and butter this is what he always plays uh, definitely well known one of the best raweg players right now in the game and let's take a look at his list and um, i'm not i don't you know i mean i love 76ers but i'm not very like too caught up on you know, how his lists are adapting and changing. But this was the list that he was running. Um, of course, we have the three Grookies and then the two, two Thwacky Rillaboom. We run three uh, Thwackies because we definitely want one of those on our bench at the beginning of the game. So we can evolve it uh, with that um, super growth attack with uh, Raweg, the tag team there. Very important. Uh, getting that Rillaboom set up on, the, on, the, on your first turn or second turn with, you know, with your tag team there. Always important because Rillaboom is our energy acceleration engine for this deck, so that is definitely a really big deal. Um, so yeah, that's why we're running three. We do have the new Thwacky uh, with Leia the Land, the one that came out in Shining Fates. We run this one just because it does have free retreat if there's a stadium in play, um, and it's always good to have a you know a Pokemon with with a free retreat. Uh, it's just sort of the best Thwacky that we kind of can be running right now. Uh, he's got two doubles in here. Again, a very good two prize attacker, one of the best, honestly. Um, in the game right now, three three colorless energies. You can set that up in one turn with Rillaboom down on your bench. And, uh, you know, late in the game, if your opponent has, you know, two or one or two prize cards remaining, you can hit for 240, 270 th for one turn setup. Very, very good two prize attacker. Um, can even KO some tag team Pokemon, so it's very good. Uh, we get two Crobats. We don't have any Dedenne in the deck. Um, but we have two Crobats and an Eldegoss. Those are sort of our support Pokemon to draw, you know, our cards. Crobat, of course... You know, just to draw some cards, all the guys to get things out of the discard pile, all the standard stuff. Uh, he's got two Rowegs. This, is, of course, is sort of the main f like facet of the deck. Uh, we would really like to, um, you know, use this and, and have it sort of be our primary setup card, as well as our, one of our primary attackers in the deck as well. And then we have a Shaman Prism Star. Shaman Prism Star is fantastic, um, mainly just because, you know, it does 30 times uh, all the energy on our, all of our Pokemon. So this is... You know, not too bad. It's easy to set up with Rillaboom. At the most, like, this thing could potentially hit for 300 damage if we have all 10 of our grass energies on the board. Uh, for a single prize attacker, two energy setup, it's definitely a very, very good option in this deck as well. Uh, a good revenge attacker, even. Like, you don't even need to one-shot stuff with this. It's just really good to sort of finish off some KOs with a single prize Pokemon, force them to have to boss you uh, to take multiple prize cards next turn. And then, of course, you know, he, Raweg, or, or sorry... Not Raweg, uh, Mewtwo, right? 76ers uh, loves to run Mewtwo in the deck, and it kind of makes sense. We get to sort of uh, use use Mewtwo as this Raweg, right? We can discard one and then play Mewtwo instead of the, the Raweg tag team. But what this does is it not only does it give us one less in our retreat cost, but it also removes our weakness to fire, uh, which is a big deal. So if we are going against a Weldner deck, um, you know, yeah, Rillaboom and, and, and Eldegoss and things like that and Shaman are weak to fire, uh, but for the most part, like, you can just sort of use Mewtwo, right, and uh, put the big charm on it, give it 300 HP, um, and uh, use Raweg's attack without really being weak to fire. So um, you're still getting knocked out by that 300 uh, Rush, Rim and, uh, Rush Rim and Charizard attack, so that's one thing to note. But, you know, for the most part, Mewtwo, definitely really good to get rid of that fire weakness, especially if you're playing things like Blounds or, or Senti, right? Uh, supporters, got four Marnie, three Boss, uh, Cynthia Caitlin's. Uh, Melowana, Guzma Hello, we are running Tackle Engine, we got four Tackles, so a massive Tackle Engine in the deck. All of these Tag Team Supporters, extremely good, because we are running Stadiums, uh, Tool Cards, Special Energies, uh, for Guzma Hello, Malawana, obviously just really good, uh, because Rowie gets to heal when it attacks, and of course, you know, we're running Big Charms and stuff, so definitely really good, uh, for sure. On top of the Tackles, we have four Quick Balls as our Pokemon Search, 
just to kind of find those, you know, those Pokemon. Most of our Pokemon are basics, except for like the Rillaboom lineup, right? Um, which, for the most part, we're, we're not really needing to draw into those. We're just evolving it with Rowig. Uh, four Crushing Hammers. Now, uh, Rowig's GX attack, Tropical Hour GX. If you have the six energies, uh, you shuffle all of your opponent's po uh, energy from all of their Pokemon back into their deck. Uh, so that is a very powerful ability. And then Crushing Hammers, maybe to stall a little bit. Uh, keep this thing alive for a turn or two so that we can Tropical Hour GX eventually. So Crushing Hammers on top of Ra or this Rowig Tag Team GX attack. Incredibly, incredibly uh, annoying at times, but definitely very good and, and a good strategy. Uh, we have two reset stamps in the deck. I think that also makes sense with the double, uh, with the two prize attackers and, and the three prize attackers as well. You know, it, a lot of times they're, they're going to have two, one or two prize cards remaining right in a matchup, so you might as well run some reset stamps. Uh, we do have one Ordinary Rod in here to get the energies back and maybe some Pokemon back as well. Cape of Toughness, I suppose this is to attach to... Uh, double, right? If you're if you're playing uh, a matchup that primarily you need to use double, you can put the toughness escape on it. Brings it up to 260 HP plus his ability soft wool, which is minus 30 when it gets attacked. That brings you up to 290 HP effectively on that double V. Very very good, very impressive. Uh, we do have an air balloon as well to give most of our Pokemon free retreat. Chaotic swell because it's the best sort of disruption uh, stadium card in play right now. I guess you could play power plant. Um, might be good, but I guess this deck wants a better chance against welder deck. So chaotic swell is probably the uh, your better option when it comes to, you know, your welder deck matchups. We got uh, 10 grass for our energies and two captures. Captures are really good because we can put the capture on a Rowag turn one and find that Grookey if we don't have a way to find it uh, otherwise, right? So capture energy, definitely really good in the deck. Um, all of our Pokemon pretty much have, you know, colorless energy in their attack cost except for Shaman, so like, why not? Yeah, I mean, it's a really cool deck. Like, honestly, Rowag, it made the top 10 list this month. Uh, or, you know, the video that I posted this month for last month. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. Um, and I think I used this exact list as an example. So definitely super cool. Big shout out to 76ers. I'm probably not going to spend that much time on all the deck lists, but 76ers, like, that's a cool Rowag list. So I wanted to give him some credit. Uh, Pedro uh, ben Bendira from Brazil, he went 9-4 and four as well playing ADP. Let's take a look at his new and improved ADP list. I haven't actually covered or, or, or taken a look at ADP list. Um, at all, or any ADP, ADP list since Shining Fates was, uh, you know, released. So, let's see what uh, these people are rocking here. Okay, so yeah, I mean, everything is pretty much standard at this point. Uh, it looks, everything looks kind of normal. We do have one Mawile and one Aegislash for, you know, that Desi Goons matchup. Maybe Altaria Crobat, something like that. Um, I know a lot of times people do like to play double Mawile GX in ADP, and I do think that's a really good strategy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty standard ADP. We got four boss, four research, two Marnies. Uh, four saucer switch quick ball. Uh, we got three cherish balls in here. Makes sense, uh, I suppose. We get two Dedenes, two ADPs, and the Mawile. So definitely not bad. Three E switch, two E spinner. So definitely going with the consistency build. This is not ADP hammers, um, and I think that if you're not playing hammers, this is sort of the stuff that you would be playing. One great catcher as well. Definitely very good. I like the four boss one great catcher. Uh, two big charms. You can put that on ADP. Kind of maybe survive E turn for a turn or two. Um, maybe survive just uh, another <laughs> turbozation deck or something like that. So Big Charm, I think, is really good at this point. And then we have that ru one Rusted Sword to attach to one of our Zacians, um, get us up to 290 damage. So definitely very, very good. Definitely very, very good. Uh, Rusted Sword is extremely important in Zacian decks these days now that, now that it was released. We got one Swell, uh, eight Metal, three Water. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I think, um, you know, the Aegis Slash tech is, is sort of up to you, right? If you think that, I mean, Desi did win the Invitational, and this was our next tournament back. So I guess that does make sense. You would kind of want to prep, uh, assuming that people are going to be playing Decidueye Goons in this tournament since it did win the Invitational. But uh, we didn't really see too many in the tournament. I think we only had a few. I uh, said so that Aegislash was kind of dead weight throughout the tournament. But again, you know, you can't fault him for that. Um, and I know that Double Maw Wild GX is also very, very good. So, you know, maybe that's sort of, uh, maybe it's just more worth it to run multiple Maw Wilds. But, you know, who knows, bro. Big shout out to Pedro, 15th in the tournament. Uh, congratulations, man. Thank you so much for playing. Uh, next up, we got Michelle Babin, a Chill Series champion. She did play in the Invitational as well, so coming back strong for Season 2. Uh, from Canada, 9-4. and four, She was playing Eternatus VMAX. This is the first Etern list that we'll take a look at today. Um, awesome. Nice little two-liner here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, kind of standard, just just straight Etern hammers. Uh, we got the 4-4 four, four lineup with 4 Crobat. Uh, for Yveltal, Yveltal is just an incredible option. You might be thinking, like, why is there four Yveltal? Like, wouldn't you rather run maybe Spear Tomb or Hoopa or something like that? Um, Yveltal is just really good. It's a free retreat pivot. Um, for the most part, it's one of your best options to populate your bench. The attacks are actually pretty playable as well. Um, and it's just one of those things where if something gets knocked out, like, you can always put the Yveltal in 
Uh, it's got free retreat, and, and, and you know, best case scenario, your opponent takes one prize card next turn, even if you don't attack, right? So yeah, and the two zigzagoons just because you know finishing off that damage, like a lot of things do have two two eighty HP, um, or you know if you're hitting for two ten, things have two twenty, right? So the zigzagoons definitely help a lot with the math. And then one spirit tomb, the one spirit tomb can be really good to sort of finish off KOs as well. Um, you know, it's just a really good revenge attacker. You can set it up on your bench, come back, hit for like 150. Uh, so it's definitely a pretty good card as well when it comes to sort of a single energy attachment, basic dark Pokemon, um, attacking Pokemon. We got four boss in the deck, four research, four Marnie, you know, just standard stuff. Again, this deck is just all about consistency. Uh, boss's order is extremely important. The, the draw supporters, you know, you're always going to want to want them. The ability to like Marnie and then Crobat or Crobat then Marnie in a turn in one turn uh, four times is, is very, very good. Um, and it's just something that I think uh, it's almost essential when it comes to, you know, building a top level deck right now. Um, we've got uh, four Crushing Hammers in the list. Now you can run uh, E-Turn in several different ways. Like people run Poison E-Turn. Some people are running like Big Charm with multiple Spirit Tombs E-Turn. But for the most part, like Hammers is just extremely, extremely important. If you're playing an Eternatus Mirror match, uh, which we did have in the in the finals. Like if if one of them is not running crushing hammers, they're at a, just an incredible disadvantage. And uh, I think crushing hammer is essential, honestly, right now in the format. If you are running Eternatus, it also helps with the ADP matchup. Also helps with some amazing rare decks. Um, I know this Etern list uh, or Eterns in general kind of actually struggle with that new Kyogre list, but you know crushing hammer is just incredibly incredibly good. Um, I would always recommend playing crushing hammers in the in the deck right now. Unfortunately, that's just sort of how the format is, um, and, and there's not really much we can do about it. Uh, four quick ball, four great ball. As well as two Pokecoms there down towards the right. So plenty of Pokemon Surge, four Switch, two E-Spinners, which is something that I guess is a little bit new. Um, he's running one less energy, but two E-Spinners. Um, and, and the reason for this, I suppose, is, uh, uh, well, I guess it's just, uh, it's searchable in some way. Um, well, I guess you can't really search an item card in this deck. Um, but uh, technically, you know, you can just draw in a Spinner like it's an energy and it is energy. But of course, if it is your second turn... Uh, you can grab multiple of them, right? So I think E Spinner is actually very good. E Turn does like to go sec or go first, like going go second on their first turn. Uh, that way they can get that power accelerator off, and E Spinner is just going to help with that, right? Because you do get to draw the three energies. Um, so I think E Spinner is actually very, very smart, and it's a very good decision in E Turn, especially um, you know a deck that oftentimes does want to go second and get that power accelerator off on your first turn. So you know definitely very smart, uh, an awesome deck list from Michelle. Definitely super consistent. Big shout out to her, man. Uh, she's been super consistent ever since she started playing in Chill Series Tournament, so I love to see it. At number 13, we have Lucas Oldale from Canada as well. My man Lucas, he was playing Picaram. Let's take a look at his Picaram list. Um, we did have, we, we, and I was actually pretty still well played in the tournament. Uh, we had a lot of Picaram players. I don't know why these are taking so long to load. I have very bad internet. Okay, there we go. So, uh, yeah, this is Picaram. Uh, it's, it's the same Picaram list that we've always seen, kind of. I'm uh, pretty sure. I don't think anything is really different here. Um, we got three Boltons, two Dedenne, two Pigram, two Mewtwo, Crobat, and Eldegoss, Raichu, Tapakoko. Uh, all standard stuff. Four Research, four Marnie, four Boss, yep, two, two Yelgrunt, yep, four Switch, four Hammer, yep. Uh, four Quick Ball, two E Radar, two Stamps, uh, one Cherish Ball, one Tag Switch, two Air Balloon, one Chaotic Swell. Um, yeah, I mean, everything here is is almost exactly just what you would expect. This is what people are running for Pigram these days. And I don't think that uh, it's going to change much, uh, at least not for a little while. Um, of course, like, Picaram is more consistent. It's better if you're not running two Yelgrunts and four Crushing Hammers. But again, with the threat of ADPs now, uh, with the threat of Eternatus VMAX in the format right now, the two decks that are probably the biggest threats uh, other than Picaram, you really got to make sure that those matchups are a bit easier for you. And I think that the only way that Picaram really consistently beats Etern specifically is by running the, t the four Hammers. I mean, two Yell Grunts, and even then, like, you're, you're not really winning consistently, but you have a chance, uh, at least for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have too much to say, guys. I mean, in my opinion, Pigram is the most well-rounded deck in the format. Um, I think most people kind of agree that Pigram is just a menace. Uh, it's not positioned super well right now in the meta, uh, with things like E-Turn, which just love tag team Pokemon, love to eat up and just gobble tag team Pokemon. Um, ADP Zation now also just one-shots <laughs> tag team Pokemon, but um, for the most part, like, this deck is, is extremely well-rounded. And can really do it all. Um, and uh, you always have the potential to lose against Pigram no matter what's going on. Uh, so definitely very, very interesting. Uh, so big shout out to Lucas, man. Playing uh, playing personally what I think is probably the best deck in the... F in the f well, I mean, I guess E-Turn is, but, you know, one of the best decks, Pigram. Uh, next up we have uh, Chandra. Chandra, uh, 12th. I don't know where she's from. 9 and 4 playing ADP. This is, I think, the last ADP we're going to look at. 
Oh, we'll let it load. Oh, oh there we go. Um, okay, so this looks a bit different at first glance than the last one. We've got three Dedenes and three Zacians, so instead of four Zacians, two Dedene, we have a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we got two ADPs, and we do have two Mawiles instead of an Aegislash tech in there, and we do have the Crobat and Eldegoss. I kind of like this. Like, honestly, I think that multiple Dedenes like that, there's some games where you literally just have to play Dedene like three turns in a row um, to make sure that you get like that boss boss game, and, and, and it can be very, very good. Uh, Double Mawile GX, of course, very good against, um, you know, that Crobat Altaria deck and, and, and maybe Desigunes and a few other matchups as well. Uh, Mawile, it's just such a good card. Uh, it's the really just one of the reasons that ADP Zacian is able to win a lot of matchups. Uh, so I think running two of them there, two of them in there is smart. Kind of still functions the same purpose as Aegislash, kind of helping with the same matchups. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we got four Research, four Boss, two Marnie, so standard supporter lineup. And we have four Saucer, four uh, Quick Ball. We're running four E-Switch here instead of three, so definitely uh, going for a consistency in terms of that uh, GX attack. Um, we got, uh, yeah, so four Switch, uh, three Cherish Balls, yep, two Spinners, yep. Um, in this deck, we actually have two Air Balloons and two Rusted Swords with no big charms. Um, so this is definitely more of an aggressive build. You're not really hoping to survive as long. You're really just hoping to, to get it off as, as quickly as you can um, and just start knocking things for 290. And, and I like that strategy with ADP. Um, I think that uh, the two Rusted Sword, two Air Balloon, no big charms with three Dedenne, two Mawile GX definitely sort of uh, shows how aggressive that this tech list is meant to be. And uh, definitely how, fa how fast paced it's meant to be. So I kind of like it, actually. If I had to pick between this ADP and the last one, personally, I would probably choose this one. I think it's just sort of positioned a little bit better right now in the meta to be playing uh, ADP in this way. So big shout-out to Chandra, man. Uh, or, or whatever. Girl. I don't know. I don't I don't I have no idea. Uh, but thank you for playing. Uh, ADP Zation, definitely really good. Next up, we have Espinola. Uh, he is from Mexico. 931. So we're getting out of the 94 threshold. And he's playing Senti. These are... Uh, the first of two centis that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, okay, so this is, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just ability. It's ability Santa Scorch, so centi nets, as some people like to call it. And we got the 3-3 three, three centi lineup, three Jirachi, two Crobats, two Volcanion. So, of course, Jirachi, Volcanion, those are our starting options. We get the Crobats, the Denes, um as our draw support there. And then sort of our tech attackers for, for different scenarios, we do have Kramer and Heatran. I know a lot of people are running Reshi in this matchup. Heatran GX is good or better in some ways, uh, for sure, but they definitely serve a similar purpose in the deck. And then we have the Eldegoss and the Fion. Fion is interesting, but it's actually very good in this matchup as well. Uh, we got uh, four Welder, two Boss, one Bird Keeper, all good stuff. Um, four Quick Ball, four Calm, so plenty of Pokemon Surge, four Switch, four Scoop Up Nets, uh, specifically for, you know, the Jirachis, Volcanions, and, and things like that. Um, scoop Up Engine is just really, really good. Makes the deck list at least somewhat consistent. And then we got the two Fire Crystals, uh, two reset stamps, three hearth, and 11 fire energies. Um, very good. I mean, this is pretty much that standard Sentinets sort of Thomas Brophy list that you oftentimes see, right, it, it being played. It's probably the most played Senti list right now in the game and probably one of the most consistent. Uh, I like it. I like it. I think that uh, some people are, of course, like I said, are running Reshiram Charizard over Heatran GX, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, I don't really play much Senti. Um, but I do know that both of those cards, Heatran and, and Reshiram, are definitely very, very good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the list. I don't really have too much bad things I can really say about it. I don't really know what it could be missing. Um, I guess, actually, one thing that it's missing is Giratina, which is interesting. But I guess they kind of realized that Luke Metal is just going to be played less right now in the format with uh, ADP being being predominantly the, the Zacian deck. And things like Turbo Zacian, most of the time, not even running coding, right? So they're like, you know what? I'm um, taking a look at sort of how the meta is right now, how the format is, and I'm just going to decide not to run Giratina because Luke Middle just isn't seeing that much play. So I kind of like that. I kind of like that idea. And, uh, yeah, I mean, big shout-out to this guy, Espinola, my man. Congrats, bro, for getting 11th in the tournament. Uh, number 10, we have uh, St Stevis, St Stevis, 31 from the U.S. 10-3, uh, and three, so now we're in the 10 and threes. Got 10 wins, and he was playing E-turn as well. Let's see what his E-turn list looks like. Once it loads. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so it's actually the same exact list as Michelle, which is actually interesting. Um, I don't know if they worked on it together or anything like that. It might be just a coincidence. Maybe the list was leaked or something before the tournament. I'm not even sure. Uh, but it is the exact same list, uh, so we're not really going to go over too, too much. Uh, but you can see how this sort of... This E-turn list definitely is positioned well right now in the in the format. If I had to pick an E-turn list right now, exactly, in, in sort of this state and time, this might be the one that I want to play. 
Um, and, and, and I do like it. I think it has everything that you need. It's got plenty of uh, four ofs in the deck, max consistency. Uh, I like, I love the energy spinners. I love the idea of going second, consistently getting the, the power accelerator. Uh, E-turn is a setup deck. It just has a really basic uh, sort of streamlined setup. But uh, once you get it set up, uh, and if you do get it set up as efficiently as possible, it's definitely going to help you out. Uh, so yeah, big shout out to Stevis, man. That E-turn list is busted. Uh, same list as Michelle. Again, I don't really know who created it, but uh, next up we have the man himself, Thomas Brophy at number nine, just bubbling outside of top, uh, top eight. So unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, yeah, uh, he's playing Senti, so this was our highest placing Senti in the tournament. Um, kind of what you would expect from Mr. Brophy here. So let's uh, let's see his list here. Um, yeah, okay, so this is the same list as we just saw. So that's interesting, right? So maybe um, Espinola kind of knew the list that uh, Thomas was playing. Um, and uh, kind of decided to just go with the flow here. Um, Thomas is actually a bit different. I think he's running... Yeah, it is It is a little bit different. Um, sorry. I don't know why I thought it wasn't. Um, Thomas is running a Goon and a Reshiram instead of just the Heatran. So you take out the Heatran, put in a Reshiram and Charizard, and a Zigzagoon. So that's the difference when it comes to Pokemon. And then in terms of the uh, supporters here, he's running one Reset Stamp. Or Trainers. He's running one, one Reset Stamp and uh, as well as one Pokecom instead of four. And he does have a Great Catcher in here. So the list is a little bit different. Um, I looked at it and didn't see Giratina. I thought it was the same, but no, it is different. Um, but for the most part, like you can kind of see, right? This is kind of how people are playing Senti right now. I think Cram is really good. Um, and like I said, I think Goon is also very good because we're running Nets and it does help with the math sometimes. For sure. Um, and, uh, you know, that Rush Room Charizard can just be really, really good, man. Definitely can be really, really good. That Double Blaze GX, incredible. It, it's just sort of pick and choose. Like, which GX attack would you rather have um, when it comes to, you know, in your fire deck, welder deck? And, and it's kind of a preference thing. Uh, Reshri Ram, I th would say, has the better GX attack, but, you know, Heatran's a two-prizer, so again, it's kind of pick and choose. I know that Thomas likes to play Reshri Ram and Charizard, so definitely very good. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at this, I guess this is probably the more well-rounded, I guess, like, overall consistent uh, Senti list, but again, it's up to preference, and uh, they both had very similar records, so, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, big shout-out to Thomas, man. Big shout-out to Thomas Brophy, uh, Chill Series, uh, you know, family member, admin, uh, somebody who helps out all the time. He's a good dude. Uh, great, great Senti player, so shout out to Thomas. Uh, next, we're getting into our top eight. We're, what, 22 minutes in? Okay, we can start cruising here. We got f five more E-turns to look at in top eight. We have five in top eight. Ridiculous. And uh, we have Savid 400 from the U.S., uh, 10 and 4. Let's see what his list is looking like. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, so this is actually like Weavile GX, uh, Umbreon, and Darkrai E-turn build, uh, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, it's kind of cool, actually. Um, it's different. Um, you don't really see this E-turn listing too much success, like too much play in general. Um, it's definitely a bit less consistent. We have got the red and blue. Uh, we can get, we can you know go into our, our Weavile's and stuff like that. Um, we've got uh, the Umbreon and Dark Ride to sort of you know move our energies to it or to and from, uh, which is what Weavile does, and then we get to use that GX attack um, in in this dark deck, which typically doesn't run a GX attack. So definitely pretty cool as well. Um, and then we have the Guzzlord, um, which I suppose. Uh, you know, we can also move our energies to it and attack with it if we need to. So it's actually kind of cool. Like, it's a well-thought-out deck, right? It's definitely cool. It works well. It's got good synergy. Um, is it as consistent as other Eternal decks? You know, I don't know, uh, right? I think that's probably the only reason people aren't playing it. Uh-oh, my camera died. All right, give me one sec. I'll, uh, I'll switch out the batteries. All right, we're back. This is what happens when you, uh, when you talk too long. Let me, let me just turn this a little bit. Ah, okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying, uh, this uh, this Mawile deck is definitely very interesting. Definitely very cool. Like, I, I like it a lot. It's got good synergy. Uh, it's got the four hammers in there. Definitely needed. Plenty of uh, plenty of Pokemon Search. Um, it kind of fits well into the deck, except, um, you know, it's just a little bit different, right? It's just a tad different. And, uh, you know, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I don't really have too much else to say with it. I've never played with this deck list, but, uh, you know, I, it definitely would have been cool to see this in action. Uh, maybe I'll test it out a little bit on ladder. I suggest you guys go test it out. You know, it's like, that's what this is about, right? You see this list, you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, let me go try it out. So, you know, let me know. <laughs> let me know. If you guys have played this list, uh, let me know how it is. He's got the two hiding energies in here as well. Gives these, you know, these Pokemon free retreat. Definitely very good. Uh, Swell. You know, he's got uh, eight. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I like it. I don't know. I don't have too much else to say about it. I think it's definitely super, super cool. Uh, big shout out to Savit for getting a top eight with a, a unique list. Definitely a unique list. Next up, we have Led Lomas. Lead Lomas. I'm not sure. He's from Argentina. 10-3-1, also playing E-Turn. Uh, and this is Poison E-Turn. So very cool. We're seeing all the different types of E-Turn today. Um, and uh, this is the E-Turn list that's won Chill Series a few times. Um, it's just a very good E-Turn at this list. 
Uh, very powerful. This is probably one of the most hardest hitting, um, highest damage potential decks right now in, in the game. And, and that's always good when you have potential to one-shot uh, VMAX Pokemon, which Poison E-Turn this list does. Uh, you're going to probably be somewhat successful, right? Um, especially like post-rotation, this definitely might be the best way to play Eternatus, I, I, I would think. Uh, we got the Toxicroaks to add damage counters. Slowbro to do the damage. E-Turns, of course. Uh, Crobats for draw support. We do have that Hoopa as our single prize attacker there. We can pop off for 90 at any given point. Uh, we've got Bosses Orders, uh, Research Marnies, uh, Quick Balls, Great Balls, Pokecom, Plenty of Pokemon Search. We have four Switches, three Dark Cities, and two Hiding Energies, all as switching options. Uh, because, of course, this deck needs to switch in and out to get that poison off. Um, and uh, we do have a capture energy in here as well, I guess, to consistently get uh, those Krogonks and Slowbros down on the board because they are important. And, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, like I said, like with E-Turn with the Toxicroaks, if you get two or three down on your board, you get him with the, the Galarian Slowbro poison. You can hit 320 with this deck. Uh, absolutely crazy. Like, you can hit 300, 320. Um, it's just a, an extremely powerful deck. Um, and uh, the, the fact that you can one-shot V-Maxes with 320 HP, you know, definitely makes this deck uh, uh, scary to go against and definitely very, very impressive. So, uh, you know, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And again, it's won Chill Series a few times. So shout out to uh, shout out to Lead Lomas and shout out to uh, Fernando who won Chill Series with it twice. Um, oops. So definitely cool to see. Definitely cool to see, man. Number seven in the tournament, Poison E-Turn. Next up, we have Lee Bui, Master Lee Bui. Uh, obviously a really great player, has a lot of success. And he was playing Luke Metal. This was like the only Luke Metal for days. We had one at 21 um and then we had a couple down here in the 30s but not a lot of luke metal in the tournament uh he got sixth in here top eight with luke metal and i think this is just sort of a pretty typical luke metal list um if i recall correctly now we're gonna have to wait for it to load unfortunately we'll just we'll just wait a little bit <laughs> we'll just hang out until this loads perhaps maybe there it is whoa uh, maybe if i close some of these tabs give me a sec Close, 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 close. Cool. Uh, Luke Metal here. Yeah, so four is HDN, two Luke Metal, two Zamazentas, all standard, four Marnie, four Research, four Boss. Pretty standard. Two Malolana, one Cynthia Caitlin, one Goose Mahala. Um, I know the Malolanas and Cynthia are, are standard. I don't know if Goose Mahala is actually standard, but that's like a standard thing to do, but that's actually pretty cool. Uh, four Switch, four uh, Saucers, three Quick Balls, actually, instead of four. Interesting. Uh, we got two Stamps in here, two Dolls, two, two Tag Calls, all good stuff. Four Goggles, yep. And uh, we actually have two Power Plants. Which is very interesting, right? I mean, Power Plant is very good. It stops the Dene, stops Mawile, stops Oricorio, stops any GX Pokemon with uh, ability. So, Power Plant is interesting. I actually like Power Plant in Luke Metal a lot. I think it, it, it makes this deck list uh, pretty good. And again, like, you don't really need to worry about E-Turn, right? You have a pretty good matchup typically against Eternatus. Um, so, you know what? Uh, Power Plant seems like it's good in the ADP matchup, good in the Peak Realm matchup. Overall, just kind of... Uh, making the deck a bit more consistent in its bad matchup. So I like Power Plant and Luke Metal. I think that's very, very smart. And I think that people should continue to do that. Um, we have uh, nine metal and then four coating, of course. You know, yeah, all, all pretty good stuff. I think the only difference here is maybe like the Guzma Hala in here. Um, maybe Reset Stamps. I think it was in the deck. I, yeah, I think Reset Stamps is in the deck uh, prior. Um, but the Power Plant's definitely a pretty new concept. I like it a lot. I definitely like it a lot. So kind of a big brain Luke Metal list. Um, and, uh, you know, if you watch my, excuse me, sorry, if you watch my 10 best decks video, which I did post the other day, um, I did say that Luke Metal was kind of on the decline. It was ranked sixth, I believe. No spoilers. Uh, go watch that video. Um, but, uh, you know, it's definitely cool to still see it getting top eights in pretty decent sized tournaments. It's not a bad deck. It's just not as well positioned right now in the meta as it used to be. Um, and, uh, you know, actually if we look here at his matchups, so he hit, uh, two centies, um, one, one, lost one. Uh, he played one ADP. He actually did beat it. Um, we see he did beat a rush like a Charizard, Rush Room and Charizard. Um, beat another Luke Metal. Uh, beat some E turns. Lost to Me Three Welder, um, and then ended up losing to Peak. But you know what? This deck list could have gone very far. Like I'm actually surprised that he didn't uh, beat that Peak. To be 100% honest with you, but you know Peak Rom, it, it's it, it'll do that to you for sure. So shout out to Matt, to to Lee Bui for kind of uh, designing a newer Luke Metal list and then getting it into top eight and, and doing really well with it. It's I, you know. We love to see it. Uh, we have Menacing at number five with actually a Welder Mewtwo list. He's from Mexico, 1031. We do have not seen Welder Mewtwo in such a long time. This was the deck that did win Chill Series number one, so it does have a special place in my heart. It won the first ever Chill Series tournament. Shout out to uh, Quay EJ, uh, um, the OG champion, the first ever uh, playing uh, Mew3 Welder. Uh, cool. All right, let's take a look. 
Uh, wow. Okay. So I mean, it's pretty. It's actually kind of interesting. It's it's honestly not as like diverse in terms of like a Mewtwo matchup, but overall it's kind of like a, a more of a welder box match uh, sort of deck uh, deck list. Um, you know, and I say that because we're only running two Auroras, but we're running higher counts of fire energies, and we have attackers like uh, Cramorant in here, and, and we even have um, you know Breaks in and Charizard in here, things like that. So it's actually very cool. Like this is a super interesting list. Uh, the Aurora Energies, of course, they're going to be good for the Naganadel attack. They're going to be good for the Greninja attack. You don't even need them for Incineroar. Uh, those are really the two Pokemon that we have those, you know, those those Aurora Energies in here for. Um, of course, you can put both of them on a Mewtwo, and, and you can, you, you know, you can use Miraculous Duo, so that's cool. Um, but uh, two Mewtwo's, one breaks Charizard, uh, one Roshiram and Charizard. Um, and uh, the Brixen's kind of interesting to me. Like, personally, I think that's super cool. Um, it's actually running four Hammers. Uh, it's it's kind of like a like a kind of like a a setup side of like kind of deck like breaks into Charizard um, with hammers actually does help a lot and, and it kind of switches the deck into a different mode for some matchups but you do of course have like the welders uh, the reshis uh, the you know, the incineroars the really fast paced high damage type cards which is definitely really cool as well um, we don't see Charizard GX in here so it's it's pretty interesting it's honestly pretty interesting and we have one boss but we do have Eldegoss. Uh, four Quick Ball, four Switch, four Cherish Balls, yep, two Dedenes, yep, Karam, or Karam, Karobat, we have a Goon in here. Yeah, it's it's actually super cool, actually, you know, the more I'm looking at it, it's, like, it, it comes together really well, actually, and it's it's not something that you would necessarily think of running when it comes to uh, a Mewtwo deck, right? So, super cool, like, it's very, very cool. I mean, it does have the four Hammers, three Poke Gears to find your, your only five supporters in the deck, so Poke Gear definitely makes sense. Two Stamps, one Crystal, two Baked Arms, yep, uh, four Hearths, and, and 11 fire to aurora so i like it a lot actually it, it's different like it's different it's cool um if you're looking to play mew3 welder like maybe this is sort of like a really good way to play it um in this new sort of uh environment this new meta um i wish i saw some gameplay with it because i, I really want to see how it, it this deck performs against some matchups um and uh definitely super interesting so it's cool that we've had that luke metal list and this mew2 list in top eight uh definitely super 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 cool I love to see it. It's a big shout out to Menacing, man. I like your unique list. Congrats on getting top eight, almost top four with that awesome YouTube list. Um, all right. Now on to top four, we have Gratum from uh, Canada. Gratum? Gratum? Uh, from Canada, 11 and four. Playing E turn. What was his E turn list like? Let's take a look. Let's see what we're working with. Whoa, whoa, whoa that one was it kind of quick. Okay. Um, so this is sort of, uh, yeah, okay, so this is kind of like a fuller, or I guess like a also just a, a disruption E-turn build. Um, the addition is that we do have like a Swell in here. Uh, we are running a Tool Scrapper. We are running Absol. So I guess a little bit more of a disruption sort of uh, tone to it, I suppose. We are running three E-turns instead of four. Uh, you can kind of see how like you either run three or four of these for consistency reasons, but like, you know, it's not going to hurt. We do have two Spirit Tomb, two Yveltal. Again, very good, like I said in previous decks that we that we took a look at we have four research and then three and three when it comes to boss and marnie that's interesting i do think bo four boss um in in this deck is important and four marnie can be very good as well but you know what who knows uh, we got the four four three lineup for pokemon search uh, we do have a great catcher in here which is actually very cool as well very very interesting um four switch get the tool scrapper chaotic swell uh, he's running a total of 10 energies in the deck but we do have two hiding and one capture um, I guess this is because not a lot of people are running Giratina anymore in Senti, um, and not a lot of people are running Luke Metal, um, like Zamazenta, um, and uh, not a lot of people are running, what's the, uh, like, Dangerous Drill. Like, because of that, not a lot of people are running Dangerous Drill in E-Turn anymore, right? Uh, so I guess Hiding Energies, uh, Special Energies, it's kind of a safe play. Uh, you know, at least it was for this tournament. I don't know if it will be in the future, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, this is similar to the other lists that we saw. It's just sort of a little bit spread, a little bit more thin. We have one ofs like like Scrapper, Chaotic Swell, uh, Great Catcher, and, and as well as Absol, which kind of um, you know lessens the overall consistency of the deck, but does help it um, give it some some other options to use throughout the game. So I do like it. I do like it a lot. Uh, big shout out to Gratum. Um fourth in the tournament with that Eternal list. Awesome to see. Next up, we have Alex Wilson. Uh, TX, probably from Texas, I would think. He's uh, from the U.S. and 11, went 11 and 4, got third in the tournament. Let's take a look at his peak run list. Wonder if this will be the same, like the same list that we saw with uh, with Lucas, Lucas Oldale. I mean, I got to imagine it's going to be pretty similar. I don't think it would, uh, it would be that different. Um. 
Okay, so what's different about it? So we're running one Yell Grunt. That's one thing I noticed. And then I think we might be running an extra Big Charm? Or maybe we're just running Big Charm in general? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think that's like the only thing that's that's different, right? Because he's got one tackle, two stamp, one swell. Yeah, I mean, he's running one less yell grunt, but he is running, I think, an extra air balloon, or maybe a couple air balloons. I'm not. I don't know. It's extremely similar though. So again, he's taking a little bit of a less preference in sort of that E turn matchup. I uh, think he's probably just not gonna need uh, two yell grunts. I'm just gonna run four hammers, one yell grunt, and then I'm gonna go in and, and play multiple big charms. So I guess this kind of helps more with the ADP matchup, with the turbozation matchup. Um, and less against, I guess, with E-Turn, I guess, is sort of what I'm getting uh, vibe from this. Um, and I kind of like it, I guess, you know, maybe maybe it's not too, too smart. I know ADP is, was, like, the second most played uh, deck in the format, or for or this tournament, rather. Uh, but E-Turn was the most played deck, so I think that 2 Yelgrunt probably would be smart, uh, personally. You know, but uh, I think that Big Charm also pretty good in this deck. Uh, those pesky, pesky Big Charms. Uh, but yeah, super, super cool. I, I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's Pgrom, and again, you can tweak it in very minor changes to sort of, uh, you know, I guess, enhance your matchups against certain decks right now that you probably would be facing in the tournament. So next up, we actually have Angel Aranabar. Big shout out to Alex Bolson, by the way, third in the tournament. Shout out to you, my man. Uh, next up, we have Angel 22 Aranabar, Angel Aranabar, um, at second place, made the finals, and we have Henrique Jorge, uh, who got first place. Um, uh, both players playing Eternatus VMAX, both players, uh, just no, uh, they're, they're, they're definitely sort of experienced when it comes to these chill series finals. Both players have made the finals several times, Angel and Henrique, previous champions, great players. And, uh, you know, both, both had really great runs in the tournament playing Eternet file. Let's take a look at Angel's list. And, um, before we get into it though, if you guys are interested in watching their match, I actually have the video of their match, um, that, uh, you know, you can go check up. I posted it yesterday. Uh, great game. Great, great, you know, great, great gameplay. Went to a, a game three, no spoilers. Um, well, obviously, there's spoilers. Angel didn't win, but it was a very good match. And the E-Turn Mirror um, can always be very interesting to watch, or at least very entertaining to watch. Uh, so this was Angel's list. It, it's just Disruption E-Turn. We do have the power plants in here. We have hammers. Uh, we don't have Absol. However, we do have a Dangerous Drill and no special energy. So, again, like with four hammers and the Dangerous Drill, it definitely kind of it kind of boosts like your uh, your matchup against other, excuse me, other e turns which uh, might be running special energies. So pretty cool, like pretty cool um, for sure. Uh, not, I mean, it's it's again, it's not nothing too too different. Uh, we got four research, four Marnie. Again, only three boss, um, but he is running ten energies instead of nine. I don't see e spinner in here. E spinner seemed really cool, but I guess that just hasn't caught on yet. Um, three spirit tombs, only one Yveltal with two spirit tomb, or sorry, with two Zigzagoon. I would like a two, two, two. I think two, two, two is ideal. Maybe you just run, um, maybe like one, two, three, you know, again, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but those are three very important Pokemon. And I would personally probably play multiple Yveltal because of how good that free pivot is and that derail attack can be. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's Angel Aranabar's list. If you guys want to check out this list in action, go check out the grand finals match. I did post it yesterday on my channel. Um, and we are actually going to be taking a look at Henrique's list. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to make specific videos, like separate videos on the winner's list. However, E-Turn always, like, it, it, it's won so many Chill Series tournaments. I've made so many E-Turn into VMAX videos that, unfortunately, we'll, we, we, we're just we're not going to be able to make um, a video on his list. Like, like, on you know, a separate video on Henrique's list. Um, I just, you know, I can't make another E-Turn video, and I apologize. But we are going to take a look at his list here in the video. Uh, so Henrique, he did win it all, man. He won that, uh, I think the first place was like 60 Shining Fates pack, 61 or something like that. Uh, kind of ridiculous. 13 and 3 in the tournament. Let's take a look at his winning Eternatus list. Um, wow, okay, yeah. So almost extremely similar to Angel's list. Uh, we do have four Goons and one Hoopa, one Yveltal, so no Spiritomb in here. Um, Hoopa, again, it's, it's good. It's similar purpose, but um, a little bit different in terms of its uh, matchup spread. Um, we got uh, four Marnie, four Boss, four Research, four Hammers, four Switch, four Great Ball, four Quick Ball, um, and three Pokecoms. Uh, again, very consistent. I, I like the supporter lineup. I like the item uh, lineup. Uh, we do have two Power Plants in here, um, except, you know, he is running six Energies, and then he's running three Special en uh, Energies, right? Two Hiding and one Weakness Guard. One Weakness Guard is actually very interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Is Weakness Guard better than Capture? Maybe. Uh, especially maybe if uh, when, once Battle Styles comes out, but... Um, 
yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's cool, right? I mean, Angel was running the dangerous drill, um, and you're going to have to watch the finals match if you want to see if that had any sort of effect in the, in this tournament. But again, this matchup and this mirror matchup, uh, really in a best of three, especially just kind of comes down to like, you know, who gets that, that better setup two out of the three times. And, and, um, you know, neither player was running reset stamps, so it really just comes down to like, you know, who's going to start off well and who's just going to roll through throughout the game. Um, Henrique, you know, again, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Henrique's list was better than Angel's, um, but uh, oh, for the most part, right, I think that he, it just sort of outperformed it in those three matches at least. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I don't, I, we've seen so many E turns today, I really have don't don't have too much to say. I think Power Plant's cool. I think Hoopa's cool. Uh, weakness Guard is kind of cool. Um, I'm interested, actually, now. Let me let's, let's look at... Did, did Henrique play? Um, yeah, look, he actually did play, like, a Welder Box deck game one, which is, like, unfortunately for for, for Ampuma 7, like, he turned probably found that Weakness Guard, and then you just literally lose. Um, so that's actually hilarious. Actually ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so it's that's cool, man. Like, it's, it's definitely very cool. Um... And uh, seems like a cool list. Definitely a good list. I like I like Weakness Guard. Um, and again, like I said, no Luke Metal really, like no Giratina and Senti, so you might as well play the Special Energies, in my opinion. Um, and not a lot of dangerous drills, other than the one that he found in finals, right? Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's going to be it. That's going to be our top 16 deck lists, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, shout out to everybody who played in the tournament. All 240 of you guys. Look at this. Look at this incredible, incredible turnout. Uh, absolutely insane. Um, I just, I love to see it. Um, before we go, actually, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a treat. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to show you guys the this, this special Kyogre list because I think I'm actually making a separate video on that uh, later this week. Um, so rest in peace, guys. But anyway, uh, stay tuned for, for more videos tomorrow and in the future. And uh, again, you know, thank you guys for playing. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. Shout out to my channel members. Uh, shout out to Card Cavern for sponsoring the tournament. Shout out to everybody who played, everybody who's watching. Click subscribe if you liked the content. Uh, like the video if you liked this video in particular. And uh, let me know down in the comment section below what was your favorite list. Uh, which which list would you have played if you, if you were, um, you know, going to play in this tournament or if you did play in the tournament and you had another chance. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, stay tuned. Chill Series 22 coming next Wednesday. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. I'll see you guys later.